Good morning. We are ready. The crew are ready. Pedro Nikolaevich, go ahead. Have a request. If you have, if you are to do something, please go ahead and do it and keep talking what you are doing. Sure, I'll be talking all the time. No problem. We'll be talking. Next, please. And the main thing, for how long am I supposed to press the button after? Well, I had been explaining for a long time and many things, many times already. So please have a seat and we are going to take pictures. Pedro Nikolaevich, uh, several minutes and uh, the media are going to ask you some questions. <laughs> Pedro Nikolaevich, do something. Questions to the crew, please, prior to the training. Stephanie, please go ahead. This is going to be your first launch aboard a Soyuz. What kind of challenges does this training for this launch have versus your training for your uh, mission on shuttle discovery five years ago? Um, certainly, technically, there, you know, there's a lot of similar challenges. Um, for me, probably the biggest challenge is the Russian language. Um, it's been a challenge for me <laughs> learning the language. Um, hopefully, I've, I've learned it to a point where I can be an efficient and effective crew member and do all the roles that, that I need to do. First of all, I would like to say thank you very much for that, because we used her experience in space, and she is one of our crew members, one main of our crew members, yes? I agree. Yeah. If I could add that she certainly overcame the challenge of the, of the Russian language, because yeah. she, she's really a lot of help. What language are you going to use to communicate? Today we're going to use Ringlish. This is our unofficial language of the ISS program. It's called Ringlish. It's a blend of English and Russian. Fedor Nikolaevich, I have a question for you. The profile of rendezvous and docking has changed, and uh, the exam profile has changed too. You are now training four days instead of two. What do you think? Any improvements? Well, four against two. What would you say? In fact, we do understand that this is, uh, as we hope, a transitionary stage. And we understand that uh, we go in for it because we believe that the first profile is the way to do it. And uh, our crew, as well as the crew of uh, Pavel Vinogradov, we hope that uh, in the future we'll go back to our usual routine and uh, we take this uh, four-day exam run as a necessity. And we don't think this is something out of ordinary. It's a necessity of today's day of our transitionary stage. Fedor Nikolaevich, you're getting ready for a fourth flight. Luka will have his first one. Karen has had some experience. So comparing your crew members, you believe that all of them are ready. What do you think? They're done with their training, so they're ready. Well, you can have different answers. If they were not ready, they wouldn't be sitting here, and neither would I. The number of flights does not determine one's readiness for, for a flight. 
Modernity for applied is determined by one's wish. And I cannot say that Karen does not wish it. I know that there is uh, one guy whose uh, unofficial name is Mr. No, and he doesn't wish his mother to fly. When uh, we were t being photographed uh, during the very first evening when he saw his mother in a spacesuit, he said no, no to the exams, no to the flight. And as far as Luca goes, I can say that he represents our psychological support person. And uh, Luca took uh, Karen's son into his arms and uh, we had a little talk. And I know that Luca dreams of flying. This is his aim. And for Karen, it's a new stage, new long-term expedition. Besides, Karen has uh, another person who provides support. It's uh, her husband, who is a very experienced NASA astronaut, who also has uh, experience of flying to the ISS. So we're looking forward to this flight. I cannot say this is just one more flight. No, it's a new flight for me. Luca, is Fyodor a strict commander? Fyodor is a very, very good commander. He is not only a commander, he is an instructor. When it's necessary, he's a friend. When it's necessary, he's an instructor. When it's necessary, he's a strict. Just the way a commander is supposed to do. And it's a great honor for me to fly with him. So one's talking about a commander in a good way, or one's not talking about a commander at all. Thank you, guys. Thank you that you said good things about me. Do you have any more questions? Uh, for Luca Parmitano, for both NASA and for ESA, uh, you've flown in many different kinds of aircraft as a test pilot. What are you looking forward to the most for flying for the first time in the Soyuz vehicle? If you could answer, please, in both English and Italian. Absolutely. Where? Well, the, the answer is in the, in the question already. It's the first time that I fly in a, in a, in a real spacecraft. So uh, as, a, as a test pilot, it's always a, a great emotion to fly for the first time in a new machine. So I'm just looking forward to, uh, to see how the machine performs in, uh, in real life and the real flight after training so much in a simulator. La, la risposta è già nella, nella domanda, perché eh, questa è la prima volta che posso volare sulla, sulla Soyuz, su una navetta spaziale. E per un pilota collaudatore sperimentatore volare per la prima volta su una macchina nuova è sempre una, una fortissima emozione, quindi eh, sicuramente non vedo l'ora di vedere come, come lavora la, la navetta nella realtà, nel volo reale, dopo tante ore passate nel simulatore. Would <laughs> like me to say a few words in French as well? No, that's enough, thank you. <laughs> Fedor Nikolaevich, have uh, a good training, and I'm saying this uh, as we're approaching our Labor Day. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll be seeing each other soon. Well, first uh, at our press conference. Good luck. <laughs> Look out, the hatch is open. The hatch is closed. Copy. The hatch is closed. The indicator is not lit. Not lit, I confirm. Do you think the crew are ready? After we're done with this training, we'll be able to say whether they are ready or not. But I hope uh, that everything will be well. And uh, we have brilliant information that the crew have all the necessary knowledge and we don't expect uh, anything unusual coming from this training. And besides, this is integrated training which means that uh, this exam itself uh, is uh, a type of training 
on its own. And uh, certain things will come up. And even if this is uh, something uh, with the crew are not very f well prepared, this will help them in a real flight. So what about this increased uh, volume in terms of preparation and exam? This is true, because uh, this uh, fast rendezvous and docking profile is uh, an experiment in itself. So uh, this will be more like uh, a transitionary a backup plan in case there are certain off-normal situations uh, and uh, we can always move to the regular profile of rendezvous and docking. So this is more preparation to off-normal situations uh, and emergencies which will not indeed take place. So this is, uh, we're talking here more in terms of preparation, but the overall volume of preparation stays approximately the same. What's more difficult to do, a fast profile or a regular profile. So it's it's an additional thing the crew needs to prepare to. So even if we move to the fast profile, the long profile will still be there. It will just not be so much uh, underscored by training. But now we have uh, both options uh, in training and we'll keep looking for options that will uh, help to minimize the overall volume so that we can move move more smoothly to a future regular two-day exams.